Hey Math Wizards, it's Ms. Kanji here. I just wanted to make sure that we are all on the same page um, with the multiplication strategy that we've been working on uh, last week. So we are working on breaking apart numbers to make our lives easier when we get multiplication facts that are this big, right? 16 times seven isn't a multiplication fact that we just know off the top of our heads, but we can break up this fact, this larger, bigger, harder fact into smaller bites, smaller facts that we do know, and then we can work with those smaller bites to get our final answer, our final product. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps right now, and if you follow these steps with any other larger problem, larger multiplication fact, you should be able to get your answer the same way that I'm gonna be getting mine. So let's get started. I have 16 times seven. So my brain goes directly towards the 16. And I'm looking at the 16 and I'm thinking, how can I break up 16 in a way in smaller bites that I can handle to help me then multiply those numbers, those smaller numbers by seven? Because I'm not gonna forget about the seven. Seven's gonna stay right there. I just need to break up 16 into smaller bites. So when I think of the number 16, I'm thinking, I always think about 10 first. I love the number 10. If I take out a 10 from 16, I have six left, right? 10 plus six is 16. But I mean, that's not the only way you can break up 16. Eight plus eight is also 16. So that's another way I could break up 16. Another way you could break up 16 is four, plus four, plus four, plus four. So there's, and I know there's other ways, but these are just a couple of ways to break up the number 16, just so you know. So this 16, yes, it's the number 16, but just know it can be broken up in different ways. Since I really love the number 10, and I know my tens facts, my multiplication, I know my tens, so I'm gonna stick with this one, this, the way 16 is broken up here, this number bond. So my step one is gonna be creating a model. It's a rectangular model and I'm gonna fill in my numbers. So I have, I'm gonna be multiplying by seven and this big piece right here is the 16. 16 times seven or seven times 16, right? But since I don't know this big fact, I need to break it into pieces that I do know. So my pieces that I do know are the 10 and the set and the six. So I'm gonna break up my 16 into a piece of 10 plus a piece of six. So to really show the two different arrays, the two different pieces, I have this piece right here and then I'm gonna have this piece right here. Okay, so I have the six from the 16, and I have the 10 from the 16. And my seven stayed the same. So now I need to figure out how, what is each, um, these are my two arrays, my two rectangles, like what is gonna be the product of each one? So I, instead of this 16, I have it in 10 and six. So I'm gonna be multiplying 10 times seven, which I know is 70. And then I have to multiply my six times seven, which six times seven is an easier fact than 16 times seven. Six times seven is 42. So I'm taking my 70 and I'm taking my 42 and I'm adding up those pieces. So 70 plus 40, it's 110. And then 110 plus two is 112. So my final answer here to 16 times seven is 112. And again, to walk you through the steps, 
first we decided how we wanted to break up our bigger number, 16, and I chose 10 and 6. 10 plus 6 is the same as 16. And then I took each piece and I multiplied it by the other factor, which was 7. So 10 times 7, that's easy, that's 70. And 6 times 7, that's a smaller fact, that's 42. Then I added up my two pieces, 70 plus 42. I took the 10, 70 plus 40, that's 110. And then plus the 2, 112. So I hope this was helpful. This is a strategy we've been using. You can use these steps with any harder multiplication fact. You draw your model, you break up your numbers, draw your model, and then solve for your final answer. Thanks for listening.